collected these mineral specimens some 40 years ago while I was working on the Zyplatz mine in South Africa. Zyplatz is a tin mine in the apical portions of a highly fractionated granite, so it has all kinds of weird and wonderful minerals. In particular, it's got lots of vugs and muralytic cavities and some weird pipe-shaped ore bodies that snake down into the granite. And one of the minerals is this. It's light brown, translucent, and it forms stumpy hexagonal prisms with low three-sided pyramid terminations. Some of the specimens are intergrown with transparent euhedral quartz crystals. When I collected the specimens, I originally thought they were calcite in its slightly unusual nail head form, where it makes pseudo-hexagonal crystals with a very flat pyramidal termination on the end. The nail head name comes from a similarity to hand-forged nails that sometimes had a low pyramid-shaped head, although they usually had four faces rather than three. But then I posted it on LinkedIn recently as a mineral quiz, and someone suggested that it might be syncosite, the cerium end member of syncosite, which is a fluorocarbonate. It's, it's very similar to calcite, except that it's got a couple of fluorine anions on one end, and cerium as cations on the other end to balance it. And syncosite is certainly known to form pseudohexagonal plate-shaped crystals. That's actually a possibility because syncosite was previously identified at Zyplatz mine. But I thought I'd like to test this because I don't really know the difference. So one way to do that is the density. Syncosite's a little bit more dense than calcite, something around four, whereas calcite's around 2.7. That's quite a difference, and we should be able to figure that out with a simple density measurement on a big crystal like this one. Now here's my trusty set of kitchen scales. It's precise to one gram. That's probably enough for a specimen this size. It's almost entirely pure example of that mineral, so there's no contamination in there to mess up my measurements. So I'll just zero my trusty set of scales and 27 grams dry weight. Now, figuring out the volume of this is going to be a little bit more tricky. You'd normally do that by suspending it from a thread beneath a balance that's designed to do that, and measuring the weight in water to see how much water it displaces. It's going to be a little bit tricky with this one because it doesn't have a hook underneath. But I've got an idea. I'm just going to make a simple wire frame and suspend the crystal with a thin piece of fishing line so that I can record the displacement above the weighing scale. There we go, like that. I'll zero it. And now I'll just suspend it in water by putting the water underneath. And there, despite my rather shaky hands, it's holding steady at minus 10 grams. So that means the crystal has displaced 10 cubic centimetres of volume, because this is relatively pure water and we're roughly at room temperature here. So that makes the maths easy. 27 grams divided by 10, that's 2.7. So calcite's the front runner here with a specific gravity of 2.7 whereas syncosite has a specific gravity closer to four. There's another clue on the other side of this specimen. On the broken face, you can see some growth zones with the classic romb shape of a carbonate. The pseudo-hexagonal shape is really just a jacket that represents the last growth phase of the crystal. Here's another crystal from the same locality that still has the romb shape. And in this specimen, you can see a pattern on the sides of the column that looks a bit like a stack of hexagonal plates. And that's sometimes referred to as poker chip texture. I've got another little piece here that shows that ROM shape, and I'll use the back of it for some basic mineral tests because I don't want to damage the pretty pieces. First, I'll test the hardness. Calcite's the standard for level 3 on the Mohs hardness scale. Syncosite has a hardness of around 4.5. And since it's a logarithmic scale, that's quite a difference. 
Fluorite is the standard for level 4, so it should be a good test against this piece. This is a specimen of fluorite from the same location, and it has a nice edge on it, so I can use it to scratch our mystery mineral. And you can see that the fluorite scratches it quite easily, so that puts our mystery mineral somewhere around a hardness of 3. So that ticks another box for calcite. I couldn't find any information on the reaction response of sinkocyte to 10% HCl, but at least we can confirm if it's a carbonate. That strong reaction says it's certainly a carbonate, and probably a simple one close to the composition of calcite. One other potential candidate is aragonite. It has the same chemistry as calcite, and it's also pretty good at forming those pseudo-hexagonal column crystals. It's a little bit more dense than calcite and a little bit harder, but the key thing is that it's orthrhombic rather than trigonal. So the hexagonal columns have flat ends rather than the low pyramids that you get with calcite crystals. So there you go. It's probably just plain ordinary calcite, masquerading as a hexagonal mineral. But with a few simple tests, you can unmask it and get pretty close to the truth.